So what if we, instead of living in this lack, you know, like we're not doing enough, we're not being rigorous enough, what if we just redefine what rigor actually is? So let's get to it. You probably watched my last video and you know, <laughs> I was um, opening up all these letters and now I am organizing them because yeah, I need to organize our homeschool space before we start summer homeschooling, which will be after the 4th of July weekend. And then we'll play homeschool for like six weeks and then take two weeks off before we start the following school year, the next school year. I just need to organize because when I'm organized, I feel a lot better. My mind is clearer. It's not so chaotic. Organizing is key. Minimalism, hmm. we're not quite there. If you haven't noticed with our house, my kids, like their Legos, they have a lot of it and I'm not going to be like, no, they also love art. So we have a lot of art supplies. We, they also love science. So we have a lot of science kits and stuff, which I'm hoping we actually get through this summer or at least some of them. Let me show you my plan. Even though I'm gonna make a video about it, but that's okay. I'll show it to you now. Because I think my video is gonna be different. The plan is to uh, read a couple read aloud books. So we have these two right here. We have Artemis Fowl and we have The Maze Runner. I'm going for books that have movie tie-ins because I don't know, I think it's fun. I think it's fun to read the book and then watch the movie and then discuss it, discuss the differences. It's kind of like a book club and a movie club all in one. Yeah, I thought about just sticking to one series, but I don't know. My kids and I, we kind of get burnt out when we go too deep. Just keep reading, 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 reading the series. And then next is, I have this homeschool menu. Normally, my kids would get each get their own menu. It would be like in a plastic thing so they can just check off. We can just, you know, everything is pretty much the same and they can just check off so we don't waste so much paper. But for summer, we have just one menu for a lot of us. Three, six, nine. I have for nine weeks, but I don't have to do nine weeks. And I just wrote down what I want us to do each week. And it's very basic. Reading, writing, math, and a kit of some sort. And we want to hit them at least three days a week. And it doesn't have to be the same day. And we can just check it off because sometimes we want to like enjoy our summer. We want to be outside. We want to be able to hang out with our friends, with our family, go on hikes, go to the beach go to the zoo, you know, just do all the cool things. And I don't want to be like so strict where I'm like, oh, we can't go because we got to finish everything on our agenda before we can go do anything. I just want to be more relaxed about it basically. And so that's why we have it Sunday through Saturday because sometimes we homeschool on the weekends. At least we hit each of these three days a week and we'll check them off and that's good enough for our summer homeschooling. And I'm not too sure why during summer we're very relaxed about homeschooling for those of us that homeschool year round. So why during the school year do we not keep to the same relaxed methodology? You know what I mean? Like what's the difference? Learning is happening both periods. So why do we switch gears from summer to fall? Like what is it? And so I think that is just kind of like a mindset thing. Like where is our mindset when it comes to rigor. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. I know like in traditional schools, rigor is long hours of instruction, heavy workloads and constant testing. That seems to be what, or, and writing, writing like essays and stuff. Writing is fine, but if you have younger kids, writing essays is gonna be a bit more challenging. We kind of have to redefine what rigor is in the homeschool environment. The first tip is to focus on depth and not Breath. Did I say that right? Breath. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird word. So I think like in the traditional school system, they try to get through this whole curriculum from point A to point Z, right? And instead of trying to cover so much with very little details, you know, you're just like skimming the surface. Instead of doing that, like go deep, go deep on the topic. Like maybe you're studying about Native Americans. Usually when you're studying about US history and study about Native Americans, you may be a chapter <laughs> in the whole textbook, maybe a unit, but most likely like a chapter or two. That's not a lot because that was, that's like thousands of years and hundreds of nations. That's not a lot of time. And so you can go deep with your studies about Native Americans. Like we meant to just, spend six to eight weeks on it 
during this last school year and we pretty much spent the whole year studying about Native Americans. We didn't get to where I wanted to be, but at the same time, my kids learned quite a bit about the first peoples of the Americas. So I feel like that is more important than trying to get through all of the curriculum. And that's not to say we're not gonna get through our history curriculum, because we are. It's just not gonna be in one year. <laughs> It'll be several years. <laughs> And I think like this deep learning is just as rigorous, if not more so than what you'd find in traditional schools. Next is to like embrace flexibility. Like if you are trying to do something that you think is rigorous for your kids and it's not working, then you can adapt it and change it to what your kids need. Like if they're struggling with a concept, like you can make changes, right? you can make changes to help them better understand. So it is more rigorous for them. And rigor doesn't mean hard. Rigor doesn't mean hard. What does rigor actually mean? Like what is the definition of rigor? Is that even in this dictionary? This is the kid dictionary, I think. Not the adult one. I got the adult one somewhere, but I don't know where it's at. Rigor, harsh condition, rigorous, very strict, hard to endure because of extreme conditions. I don't like that. Is that what we want when it comes to education? To be very strict and harsh? <laughs> I don't like that definition. Screw rigor, man. Next is to integrate learning into everyday life. Like you don't, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to open up a textbook and then call that rigor. My homeschool is rigorous because we have curriculum and we have certain times where we study our curriculum, etc. Like I don't think that is necessary. I'm just organizing them because I have different binders for these. So like real life skills almost. So like cooking can be teaching, you can be teaching math and science when you're cooking, right? Especially baking. Or if you're going like on a hike or, or to the beach or something, you can incorporate science into that, right? So rigor doesn't always have to come from a book, is what I'm saying. Rigor can come from just how you approach the topic and how deep you go. And I think when we make learning more experiential, it has a deeper impact on our kids. It's not just like information that enters their brain and exits their brain once they don't need it anymore to, for those tests and stuff. Because I don't know about you, I know a lot of people who, um, especially high school, when I was in high school, would take like AP classes and stuff. And they, they just knew how to game the system. They knew how to study, they knew how to take the test, and then they knew how to forget it all. <laughs> so they can cram more stuff into their brains. Is that rigor? It's harsh, it's strict. Yeah, so maybe that is rigor. But that's not the kind of rigor. When I think of rigor, that's not what I want in my homeschool. Next is to encourage critical thinking. I don't know about you, but when I turn on the news or I look on social media, I feel like there's a lot of people that could have spent more time learning about critical thinking. <laughs> uh, so I think it's important that we teach our kids how to think crit critically and how to solve problems in a logical manner. Yelling insults at each other is not, is not critical thinking. Rigor isn't about memorizing facts, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, in the traditional school system, that's what they're doing for rigor. They're memorizing facts so they can spew it out on the tests and stuff. Instead, it's about developing critical thinking skills. And if you haven't read this book yet, make sure you do. And they also, she also came out with a workbook like thing for kids. Not really a workbook. It's just a, I mean, I guess it's a workbook, but it's not, I don't know. what my son is going to be doing next school year. I guess it is a workbook because it says workbook. <laughs> yeah, encourage your children to ask questions. Like don't freak out if they believe something that's totally different to what you think. It's okay to have different opinions. They're not bad. They're not going to like be damned if they think a different way than you do. Every generation kind of has a different outlook on life than their previous generations and it just kind of continues doing that. I mean, that's how progress happens. Otherwise we'd still be, you know, hunter and gatherers. I encourage your children to ask questions, to think deeply, and to make connections between different ideas. And I think this kind of intellectual rigor um, will serve them really well and will really help them with their writing when they get older, old enough to be writing essays and stuff. And plus, how do you encourage critical thinking? Discussions. Talk with your kids, talk about things, talk, 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 ask questions, model it, you know. We want to embody 
what we are teaching our kids. If you struggle with critical thinking and problem solving, then maybe it's something that you can work on as well because they you know some of us adults we get really agitated when we hear opinions that differ from our own and there is a better way to approach that i think yeah critical thinking it's key So next is to foster a love of learning. And I think that's one of the most important things about homeschooling is that we foster a love of learning. And fostering a love of learning is being able to learn about the things that you wanna learn and being able to do the things that you wanna do, you know, and explore and not so much doing things that you have to do. So when children are passionate about what they're studying or really interested in it, maybe they're not passionate, but they're like interested in it, then they're more likely to engage deeply and retain the information that they're learning than doing something that they don't really care about and it just kind of goes through one ear and out the other. And so we need to create an environment that nurtures that curiosity. And how do we do that? Well, one, besides modeling and embodying that natural naturally curious mentality, but also just like I said, I think in a previous video, that we need to have a lot of resources. We need to have the materials that our, our kids like to use and engage in. So like my kids love Legos, so our house is currently filled with Legos <laughs> to the brim. We have a ton of books. We have lots and lots of art supplies. We have lots of science kits. And yeah, our homeschool room is a bit of a mess. Our house is a bit of a mess because of it but I think that's okay. I'd rather my kids love learning than me keeping a super tidy, perfect looking Pinterest, Instagram worthy house. And you can customize your curriculum. Like you don't have to follow a curriculum strictly, you know, to ensure that your kids are having a rigorous education. Like you don't have to do that. Like I said before, you know, dive deep into topics instead of very, being very shallow when you're covering topics, dive really deep. And then when you do that, you're not gonna be able to follow the curriculum. You're gonna have to you know, stray away from it for a bit until those little cur curiosity light bulbs are fulfilled or I don't know what's the saying. There's something I'm trying to say, but you know what I'm talking about. Let those little curiosity light bulbs die out and then you can move back to your curriculum and it's okay. It's okay to move at a slower pace. Just because you move at a slower pace doesn't mean rigor is not happening. It's just happening at a very deep level. I enjoy these letters, but I don't like how easily the paper rips. It usually comes already slightly ripped by the time we open them. Next is to keep records and reflect. I know I've talked about this in the last video, but it's true. Like you need to keep records of what you're doing in order to feel like you're actually doing something and accomplishing things. We don't, don't think about the small things. We only think about the big things, like the big accomplishments. When it comes to homeschooling, you're, it's a lot of little, little things that you're doing and it adds up. You can either keep a portfolio, can be online or, you know, a binder. We do have, where is it? For my kids, my older kids, my kids. We do keep a lot of work in here that we've done over the years as a sort of like a portfolio. I document a lot, like taking pictures and videos. And then also in you, where you live, you need to keep a binder to keep everything organized as a portfolio so that you can um, show it as evidence of learning happening. Also, you can do, like I said in the last video, you can do backwards planning, where at the end of the day, you just write down everything that you kids did and then check off you know, which subjects those covered. There's like a lot of different ways that you can record 
learning happening. It doesn't have to be a test. It doesn't have to be a graded essay. It doesn't have to be any of that. And I get it. I understand you. You're worried that when if your kids decide to go back to public school, that they're going to be shocked that they have to do all these things. But to be honest, they adjust rather quickly. I have quite a few friends who homeschooled and their kids opted to go to public school when they were in high school. And she said they adjusted rather quickly. She was worried as well at the beginning, but she said they adjusted rather quickly because they learned to be very adaptable. I mean, humans, humans are very adaptable people. So your kids are gonna be okay. You're probably annoyed with me that I keep mentioning reflection, reflection, reflection. But you know, when you reflect, you know what changes you need to make. When you don't reflect and you're just bearing down and just dealing with it, you're less likely to make changes. Reflect, reflect, reflect. Everything can be adjusted and changed to meet the needs of your kids and yourself too, because maybe something is a bit too, like you're doing too much and you're kind of tired and it's like, yeah, you want your kids to have a rigorous education, but you also don't want to like overwhelm yourself and make your life miserable. Homeschooling should be an enjoyable process for both you and your kids. <laughs> So one thing that's good about organizing your homeschool room during summer is that you kind of know what you have, and what you need to get for the next school year. For us, with our independent study charter school, that's a mouthful to say, school funds drop at the beginning of July, which is quickly coming up, and it's good to know what I need so I can order it and we're ready for the homeschool year. And now I still haven't gotten any curriculum. <laughs> so I definitely need more of these little plastic cover pages. What do you call these? I don't know. So finally, I think rigor is about balancing structure with flexibility. Like when we are relaxed homeschooling or unschooling or slow schooling, whatever you want to call it, you're not like throwing structure out the window. You're holding the structure lightly, right? You're holding it lightly, like a gentle little, like a little baby bird, holding it like, taking it seriously, holding it lightly. You're not like, you don't have a death grip on it, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to have a death grip on structure. Instead, the key is flexibility. And having structure provides a sense of stability, especially if you have neurodivergent kids, which will be a future video, because I know that is a big question on how do you slow down when you have a kid with ADHD? I hear you, <laughs> and I will get into it. But until then, like finding a balance between structure and flexibility, you know, that's gonna vary from family to family depending on your family's needs. Your structure doesn't have to be like this stiff, inflexible thing. Your structure is gonna be something that's very loose and light. So kind of like our summer, this is our structure. This is what we're doing but it's very loose and light. We know what we're doing, we know what we need to accomplish, but we're also not taking it so seriously so that we do have time for other things in life. Education and learning is important. And I think like the social emotional development of our kids is much more important than uh, what they're learning. Because you, like I said, you can learn anytime. Those social emotional skills and then critical thinking and then just basic life skills too. All those, those are, those are highly important to become a functional adult. Knowing all the major battles in World War II is not gonna help you to become a functioning adult. Sorry, <laughs> and this is coming from a history teacher. So I think by redefining what rigor looks like in your homeschool can help you create a learning environment that is both relaxed and very effective. So remember the goal is to provide like a quality education for our kids but we're not having the stress and anxiety that traditional schools can put upon our kids. And I think we need to embrace the freedoms that homeschooling offers us. Trust <laughs> that you're providing a really rich and rigorous education for your kids, even though you don't have tests and quizzes and five page essays and etc. So if you found value in this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And if you need more help on, on, on this or anything else with homeschooling, I am offering a summer homeschool reset series, which starts in July and it's just four weeks. And so you get four one-on-one -on -one sessions with me on Zoom and there's no video so we can be chatting with messy bun hair in our bathing suits by the pool, even if your pool is a kiddie pool in the backyard like me. You also get four weeks of Voxer support so you can pick my brain all you want and I'll leave a link down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.